שלום לכולם, אני דודי טאש מחברת דיג'יטרוניקס. היום אנחנו נמצאים בכנס של PCI SIG 2015, ואיתנו קלב uh, סאפ מחברת טקטרוניקס. היי. תודה רבה. 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 I was invited here for a PC Express Developers Conference to give a talk. Um, I chose a topic of efficiency and uh, some smaller topics on, uh, on uh, some confusion that I get from customers when they ask about PC Express testing and focusing on efficiency, how to make the testing more efficient. And um, also uh, talk about Gen 4, mm -hmm. the next generation that is coming up that uh, poses some interesting challenges. Uh, also, uh, requires more efficiency and so I'm glad to uh, share some of the information here in this uh, Thank video. You. Great to have, do, have do. you with us. Yeah. So uh, would you make an overview in, in regards with the new concepts, new design challenges with the PCI Express Gen 4? Oh that would be a good topic uh, indeed. Uh, uh, Gen 4 doubles the data rate We have uh, obviously some new uh, components uh, that need to be designed uh, to make them compatible with, with Gen 4. Uh, you, uh, people heard today presentations by PCI SIG board members and uh, technical leads. Uh, for example, connector needs to be updated. There is actively work going on. Uh, also, as with any standard, new specification limits have to be established, uh, new ways of doing equalization. And so they all require some, uh, some uh, pathfinding, some uh, investigation, and also uh, test chips. We, are, we see on this uh, developers conference some presentations of early silicon, which is a very great development, uh, helping helps along the spec development significantly. And we try to be part of that and learn learn from those experiences how we can we can design better uh, test equipment and what the uh, challenges are helping along the uh, industry I see so um, um, from my perspective um, as a hardware designer there are a lot of uh, signal integrity issues and, and the jitter issues that uh, as a designer we, we will have to cope That's for cer certain. Yeah, the uh, jitter numbers definitely scale down, like uh, any time doubling the, mm -hmm. the frequency or, or the bit rate uh, produces the jitter in half at least, and sometimes more, depending on, on what the channel lengths uh, are that are supported and, and uh, other features. Uh, obviously, PC Express is very cost sensitive uh, and trying to use cheap materials and not to overly complicate uh, the chip design. So there are challenges of feasibility studies that, uh, that uh, need to address several aspects of the, of the standard. Yeah, one thing I, I wanted to clarify up is uh, to explain about the difference between base and GEM testing. Great. That's always a very, very uh, interesting topic and uh, people are not always very clear what, what those different types of testing mean and in, in Gen 3 already, so Gen 4 will be even more interesting. Of course. So uh, uh, in my presentation for, for the developers conference, I start out with, uh, with the slides like this, where I show the system transmitter uh, uh, channel and the receiver and try to explain how, how this uh, testing can be in practice made. As we know, uh, direct probing at the transmitter pins or receiver pins is not possible anymore. So the measurements have become more indirect. Measure or capture where you can, but apply these measurements where you need. And that's a, one big difference. Base spec, for example, is addressing the, the signal quality at the, at the transmitter pins. So we capture somewhere in, in, inside after some channel and uh, then use T embedding to find the actual signal at the transmitter. And there are jitter number, jitter measurements and voltage measurements that are defined for that test point to, um, and to, uh, 
to uh, compare the signal measurements then and, and determine whether it's compliant or not. How do you decide where to measure? That is usually given by, uh, by uh, port design or what, what the person who provides the chip can uh, decides to, to make up. It's usually custom. Uh, the specification does not. It describes in general terms what one should do but can't really give a, a specific recommendation. So it's, there's usually a, a breakout board. Uh, people design a little breakout channel mm -hmm. to get the signal to some probable format, like SMP connectors or, or other types of connectors uh, with good signal quality so that we don't lose much of the, the quality. And then uh, also it requires characterization. So we characterize that channel by using a replica channel usually on the on the board that is described in a, in a base spec. And so uh, that replica channel model is used for, for designing the D-embed filter that basically inverts the, uh, the effects of that channel. I see. So that's the, the gist of, uh, of base spec testing. Whereas a, a chem testing is actually you know, taking the real form factor into account. The actual baseboard setup like we have here where we have plugged in a a uh, adding card. Mm -hmm. So in this case, we are capturing somewhere in the middle of the of the circuit um, a little. There is a channel and additional components and the connector primarily in the system. And but often in that test point, the eye is already closed. So there is no no way to really apply directly measurements. So in order to put the the uh, measurement then in a sensible context is to embed some more channel that is missing in a, mm -hmm. in a test setup, plus apply the behavior equalizer that most uh, PCI Express testing is, is supposed to uh, include. Yes. And so with that, we are predicting what the signal quality would be at the receiver pins. And so that allows us to look at the system, at the, or at the PCI Express setup in a more system-wide uh, sense. Mm -hmm. So we, we take into account the channel, some of it real, some of it virtual, yeah. uh, but the signal is evaluated at the, at the receiver pins. And it's, it relates to receiver testing. When we talk about receiver testing calibration, it uses the same, same methodology, basically. Yeah. We have the, the whole thing in the, in the path and uh, trying to come up with a calibration signal at the, at the receiver that would provide us a uh, clear understanding whether the chip can receive that signal or not whether there are too many errors or, or not, and therefore put a check mark yes. whether it passes or not, yes. or I mean, to, do, to signify whether it passes or, or uh, if no check mark, then it fails. So in case I have some kind of um, uh, modeling, let's say, or uh, simulations, and I somehow generate S parameters, uh, would you be able to uh, use those S parameters uh, in the test and measurement tools and to see the effects of the, um, of the channel? Yes, that's a very, very good question. Yes, yes, we do. This parameter handling has become relatively uh, standard now on many standards, mm -hmm. either by, by using a fixed S parameters mm, for simpler standards, a like USB or, or PCI Express uh, earlier generations, or, or um, um, taking actual measurements and designing a D-embed filter or in other ways, placing your measurement point in a different location in a circuit. Because by realizing that not every point is accessible by, by measurement equipment. Yeah, and we have tools, even our automated software, Tech Express for PCI Express, has ability to design or to include a D-embed filter. So for example, if you, one uses a RF switches or some custom setup that has a little bit more loss than is assumed in a normal setup, mm -hmm. normally we, we ignore cables. We, we don't necessarily de-embed them because their loss is, is very <coughs> negligible. But if, if there is more, like in RF switch case, you may have multiple sets of cables plus the uh, relay assemblies, then it, it's relatively straightforward to de-embed. Uh, in other cases, when, when you have a more complicated setup where you want to do custom de-embed, then you can use our STLA software to, uh, to model the whole system uh, and then also specify where your measurement point is 
or where your capture point is and translate the measurements to a specific uh, uh, location in the circuit. Sort of virtual probing, people call it with different names. I see. But that's a powerful, powerful feature and, and probably moreover needed in, in Gen 4 and future generations. Uh, what is the, the new overall um, uh, insertion loss allowed uh, for the PCI Express Gen 4? Gen 4 is, is now uh, thinking of allowing, uh, I think, 10 or 12 dB. It's still be, being debated a little bit what the, the exact allocation can be. It's definitely half the uh, Gen 3 allocation. And that uh, basically forces to people to think about repeaters, uh, signal, uh, some devices that would, would uh, amplify the signal uh, if, if the channel is too long. Yes. So. So what is the target uh, length of the, of the interface, of the channel? I think right now it's, uh, it's uh, 12, dB, uh, 12, uh, 12 inches. 12 inches. Mm -hmm. I see. Um, any other additions that w you would like to, to make? Yeah, so uh, uh, I am also covering receiver testing and some challenges there. Uh, we are we have some equipment that can right now do 16 gig testing, but we also also need to look more carefully. Uh, uh, the fortunate development is that that we're trying to uh, make uh, the chem testing for uh, chem and base spec testing more similar. Mm -hmm. That has been one of the challenges in, in PCI uh, Gen 3. Uh, so that uh, problem may be solved, although doubling the rate doesn't necessarily help in that. Of course. <laughs> <laughs> it always creates some additional challenges. And then uh, we t I talk in, uh, about PLL testing. We have a uh, CRU unit, clock recovery unit, that has built-in functions to do uh, uh, clock rec uh, PLL loop bandwidth testing. And uh, we need to adjust it a little bit, but I think it's, it's going to be a great device, a single, single unit that can do this testing very efficiently. So thank you very much for the interesting topics you, you were talking about and hope to see you again. Thank it you. was my pleasure. It was great to Thank share you. some experience in PCI Express. Mm -hmm.